Welcome to EDC Journeys. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Enjoy. What's going on EDC people and what's our journey this time? I am freshening up freshening up some kitchen knives for the family at least one of them and uh, it's nothing special it's just a very simple butcher block knife I know the lighting is a little dark but this is the best I can do I do have a spotlight going but um, so this is a Chosera 800 uh, splash and go water stone and this is a dull but not terribly not terrible um, chef's knife so I am very simply and hopefully you can see it kind of gonna take the time to show you how I do kitchen knives now a lot of times I do I do them differently <laughs> um, first of all I have a lower grit stone I can go to if I need to but the Chosera stone is very good at, at cutting metal, especially, uh, you know, older metals, older steels, where the elements and alloys are more simple, let's say. Now this particular one, I think I probably got at a garage sale. It doesn't have much of a belly. And I'm putting a fairly. Do I know the? Do I? You know, really? Do I know the angle? No, but I would say probably 20 degrees. But it's kind of just my angle. Now you can see at one point. I don't know if you can see that, but at one point this this area here was never sharpened. It was when it was purchased. I'm sure. Kind of like a, I don't know, a bolster kind of area in, in a way. But when I first got it, I ground it out so that the whole bottom would be f sharp. However, a lot of people in the house enjoy using the marble countertop as the cutting board. So they go dull fairly fast. Now this is a splash and go stone. I'm kind of jumping all over here, but let me start from the beginning. First of all, this is a splash and go stone. I don't need to soak it. I do have in the other side of the sink you can't see I do have a king whetstone that's sitting in here ready to go if I want it 1,000 6,000 grit in fact I should probably refill that to keep it soaked I'm checking the temperature of the water I don't want it to get freezing cool or warm I want it to be like room temperature so that that will be at the ready if I need it now the kingstone is like I said is a thousand six thousand but it's a different brand it's hard to explain unless you've, you've used it so the 1000 grit side with tech you know numbers wise is higher than this 800 grit Chosera, uh, Chosera however in reality the Chosera leaves usually leaves a finer edge so despite it being an 800 grit and it's a splash and go stone so I have the luxury of just splashing and going now before I started I should have told you I'm gonna obviously start grinding on this side um, and the name of the game is a burr I am going to grind on this side and I can go in stages I can either do sections at a time you know and then and then kind of smooth them over at the end or I can go in full strokes which is typically what I do. 
and then I'll focus on certain areas as I need to. You know, the real trick is just find an angle that you're comfortable holding that works and then hold it. When I hold a kitchen knife, I put my thumb at the heel, my fingers always on the spine, and then I kind of just wrap my fingers around the back. But that heel is, is critical because number one, it'll get keep you on the stone. And two, a lot of times it's the heel or the tip that people miss. So and that's where your left hand comes in. Now there's a lot of ways to do it, and this could be the right or wrong way, I'm not sure. This is how I do it though. And the name, like I said, the name of the game is a burr. So I'm gonna do this until I develop a burr from the tip to the heel. Now, I just guessed based off of how, how the condition of the knife was that the 800 grit would be an okay starting place. If I get this, get the feeling, you know, in a few minutes here that it's not and that I need to go down, I can go down and I'll drop down to the Chosera 300, or um, Shapton 300, 325 is it maybe? And it's probably what I should have done from the get go, but let's just see. Well, actually, it's doing pretty well. There's a lot of ways to do kitchen knives, or really any knife, but I've seen people who just do one stroke at a time. I've seen people who go back and forth in sections really fast. You know, whatever you're comfortable with, it, whatever method you use is the best, or that works for you is what I'm trying to say, is, is fine. All I can tell you is try to use very little pressure. You're not trying to cut the stone. You're trying to just you're trying to let the cone, the stone cut to the metal. And all that dark stuff you see is bad metal coming off of the met, off of the um, knife that the stone is cutting off. So it, it does a very good job. This this brand, it's an expensive whetstone, Tresero. They don't even make the old-fashioned ones like these anymore with the uh, base. I think you can still get them on Amazon maybe, but they're, they're a little bit expensive. They're in the like 70 to $90 range. The 400 grit Tresera is great. It's green. Um, it's really good, but if you're going to get one, which is what my choice was, like I couldn't afford to get really more than one. If you're going to get just one Tresera, I would suggest the 800 because you can use it. It's low enough to, to do almost anything. You know, eat steel fast enough that you can almost rebevel. But at the same time, uh, it's it's actually a decent finishing grit when you add a strop in. So I'll use the Shapton if I need to go lower, the Chosera, and then I'll strop. And pretty much for a kitchen knife, that's where I'll end. Uh, their 3000 grit is amazing as well so if you like going higher if you need to go higher um, I'm not very organized here hold on uh, the, the another choice here that is really amazing is the 3000 but it's too high to, to do you know it's a great finishing stone but it's not a good big you know stone to uh, set your bevel on or really to sharpen on sorry i'm a coffee addict and had to take a sip of coffee okay so this is the side i've been going on it's very i know it's very hard to see let me look through the camera and see what i'm showing you yeah you're not going to see that but um, I can tell you it looks good and I can start it. I'm starting to feel a burr form. So I'm not going to worry about dropping down to, to the, uh, shaft in stone. I'm going to just continue on this until I get a, a full burr. And the name of the game is burr. The burr is the word you want to develop. That's how I know 
and it's the same thing for pocket knives so this is more of just me showing you sharpening but on a different type of knife And it's the same kind of idea on a larger scale where, you know, this is, like I told you, doesn't have much belly, but there is one. So I keep my, list, my wrist straight, or locked rather, and I raise my elbow as I get to the belly. And again, on this one, there's not much of one, so it's hard to kind of see probably, but... My biggest problem is... Uh, pressure. I always, always, always have to remind myself to lighten up, especially as I'm like in the middle of it. I'll find myself bearing down. Even still, you know, even knowing that it's not right, I, I just subconsciously do it. So, you know, take this for what it's worth. I'm just showing you my method. Maybe, maybe this will work for you if you'd like it, if you want to try it. I know that there's tons of better guides to sharpening. Uh, I always recommend Jeff Jewell for uh, most sharpening. Uh, if you use natural stones like Arkansas stones, check out Rough Rooster Knife Sharpening. He's really got a good handle on natural uh, Arkansas stones. And then uh, Jeff, I just, I credit him for most of what I know about sharpening in general. But you want to be in a position that's comfortable from the angle that you're holding. So in other words, from your hand to how you stand to where your stone is. I would probably be in a different position if I wasn't recording this video. Because you want to be able to maintain an angle in a stance where you're, you're almost using your entire waist and your shoulders in the process. Now I ramble on when I sharpen, so I'll have to edit a lot of this out, but I find it that if I don't just keep saying the stuff I want to say, I'll forget to tell you. So it's still not quite there. It's really looking good on the bevel, but it must have been a little more blunt than I thought it was because I don't quite have the burr I want yet. You know, it, and if you can get a sharp knife, then the way you're doing it, there's no, there's no real right and wrong way. I mean, I suppose there is, but people have, you know, cavemen sharpened knives. You know what I mean? So like, there, there's, if you can make your knife sharp, doing the way you're doing it, maybe that's just the way you need to do it you know there there's plenty of other uh and if it's not working for you then maybe that's when you try uh looking up other people's methods like this but i don't go from side to side until i've de just like a pocket knife until i've developed a burr to know that i've gotten rid of enough steel enough of the bad steel and i've gotten right down to the apex And even a splash and go stone, you want to keep wet. And you see, I, I was using too much pressure this last that, that last little session I just did. It's nice to keep pressure on your thumb on the heel. I find that that helps with kitchen knives quite a bit, but not pushing into the stone. You know, let the stone do the work, and try to yes lock lock your wrist, but not not grip it tight because you, you might be in this position for a little while and like pocket knives once I develop the full burr from from tip to heel I switch to the other side do the same thing and then once I've developed the burr on both sides that's when I'll go back and forth and hone it down 
and then I'll even do some reverse like dropping strokes before the at the very end but we'll, we'll, I'll show you that when we get there I mean there's nothing so there's people that, that do circles like this Whatever way is effective for you is is fine. Sometimes pinch gripping is more comfortable than keeping your finger up here. Especially if you're going to be at it for a little while, like I am right now. And I'm, fine. I'm thinking I maybe should have gone to that shaft in at the beginning because this is taking a little longer than it usually does. But I think I'm so far along at this point Look at all that old metal come off. That, uh, yeah, I'm not going to switch. I mean, I have a nice, nice looking bevel developing. I don't know if you can see the shine from it at all. I might need to raise my angle a touch to really get down to that apex. I think I'm holding it maybe just a little too low. you get a rhythm it's almost therapeutic <laughs> but it's, it's definitely different than a pocket knife you know it's bigger it's uh, it's like well obviously like a fixed blade but you know I've seen people who distress the blade the blade right off the bat by like you know they they cut the cut the edge off and then they go from side to side the whole time you know I'm not saying that's right or wrong I, I, I honestly don't know but what I can tell you is that I've tried many different ways and so far this is the way that works best for me And so if you've struggled, or still struggle, with sharpening a kitchen knife, and you haven't tried it like this, try it. I've got to raise that. See, it's, it's strange because it's usually I deal with a larger belly than this, and so it's a little, a little weird, a little wonky. This is no high-end kitchen knife either, so um, it shouldn't take long. Now, my, my stone definitely needs to be conditioned. It's definitely smoothing over, so that's one reason it's taking a long time. But you can see that it's definitely cutting the metal pretty well. Loosen up, loosen up, loosen up. See, I always got to remind myself, no pressure. Okay, we're getting there. Um, rotating your stone is always a good thing because you can wear it down and appropriately. We're really getting there, I think. Don't want to do that. That will round your tip in a heartbeat. Uh, 
And I've tried, like I said, I've tried a lot of different methods. Some of them, you know, this is just what I find works for me, especially at this angle. Not, not, whatever. That's a comfortable spot on the bevel. You know, if this were like a high-end Japanese knife, I would you would not want, or a high-end knife at all, with a wood handle, you wouldn't want to get it all nasty with the grit, or wet even sometimes, but I, on this knife, I don't care. And when I'm working on the tip, I oftentimes will do kind of shorter strokes to to do pinpoint as I say on the uh, folding knives and you can pinpoint anywhere but what, what I'm trying to say is I'll move around the stone to spots that I don't hit as often just to try to wear it especially as an expensive stone you know you want to use up as much as you can versus waste it by having to flatten it because all you do is the same spots all the time. And with my left hand, I try to remember to kind of walk down. I'm not putting any pressure. I am pushing, like pushing this way, but I'm really not putting pressure down onto the stone besides the weight of basically my hand. Now I'm going to just do the opposite. Excuse me. At first it will remove the burr that I created because as you probably know the burr, the steel is like I'm grinding on this side right now so the steel will come up around this side so that's the side you'll feel the burr on. So right now I'm grinding off the burr I just created and then I'm sure it's already gone and I'll be starting to grind on the old metal yeah I should have started down at the shaft and I shouldn't have shouldn't have jumped to the chassis. see it goes to show you and when I hold it this way 
instead of the thumb, I use my pointer to put pressure on that heel. And again, I can't tell you how, how important that was for me to find out because otherwise you really, uh, you don't get that heel very well. I used to do kitchen knives a lot more than I do now, so I've kind of lost some of the muscle memory. It's kind of like riding a bike, I guess. I mean, I still remember how to do it, but, you know, once you stop doing something for a while, sometimes you you got to practice before you get back to the level you were at. <laughs> so I will say I probably was better at kitchen knives before I found pocket knives. <laughs> the second bevel is, is almost always easier to get. Uh, I'm almost there actually. The second, I think I said the second bevel, but I meant the second burr is almost always easier to get. Second bevel also, but I think you take my meaning. There's so many ways to do it. You can, people do single strokes one way, they don't go back and forth. Some people say pressure one way but not the other. You know, it also depends on the type of stone you're on. So there are some things you should know, and especially if you're gonna if you get into it and you start buying stones that like you know like for example a chosera. If you're gonna spend money, you know, real money on a stone, you should really re you know read up on it or at least practice with it enough to know know the. Uh, the nuances of it, really, the characteristics of it, because the different materials a stone is made out of can do different things. In other words, there are some stones that pressure is like diamonds. Diamonds, you will ruin a diamond stone in one session if you do if you do it with the you know with a mighty force of pressure. I've done it. I have ruined a DMT. Yes, it was just the cheap interrupted diamonds, but. I have ruined a DMT stone in one sharpening session. Whether you believe it or not, uh, because of how hard I was bearing down. Again, that's that's my to this day my biggest problem is remembering to stop. You know, I start perfectly light, and then as I keep going, I slowly start to put more and more pressure. And I'm it's actually counterintuitive because or counter whatever because. It makes it take longer to get the, to to develop the sharp uh, knife. I'm actually, in some cases, dulling the edge, dulling the apex over. I am not a professional sharpener by any means. This could be a terrible method to do it, but it works for me. And if you need some help with how you do it. Try this way, maybe it'll work for you. That's what this video is for. It's also showing you that if, once again, if this idiot can do it, <laughs> uh, you can too. It is nice to use a larger size stone for kitchen knives, obviously. Whereas it, when I'm doing pocket knives, I'll, a lot of times I'll I, I like to hold the stone, and I could do that with this very easily, except for it gets old holding a big heavy stone. But I could easily do something like this.
but you know on my Japanese knives which I'll have to show you sometime uh, I would never get the handle wet like this I would never I would either tape it up or uh, whatever but it would it would be terrible <laughs> okay so I have a burr I have a burr uh, I'm going to do a little bit just a touch longer and again, because this is going to be the one and only stone, guys, this isn't going to take much longer. I know this is a, I don't know how long this video has been yet, but, you know, so long, the, if you don't let your knives get to the point where they're just completely rounded at the apex, it becomes a lot easier. If you can get people to use cutting boards, <laughs> it becomes a lot easier. You know, you, if you maintain your knives with a strop throughout time, you can go well, quite a while without having to sharpen your knife. You can just strop it up. But it all depends on the stat, you know, the state, the kind of steel and the state that it's in when you're when you're at it. This one was ready for a sharpening, and I had to get rid of some old metal, fatigued metal. Reveal some fresh stuff. Get a nice new apex. And I have a nice burr going down that side now. Okay, so I've now gotten a burr on both sides. And burrs can be sharp, so you don't want to necessarily rub down this way, because you can you can cut yourself if it's a sharp enough burr. You could cut yourself, but you can you feel it going this way. Okay, so. Now what I'll do is well, I'll do a couple strokes on that side to possibly remove the burr. And if I did it perfectly, you could see it, but I probably won't. Um, you know, but if you do a perfect, perfect, perfect job at developing a burr and removing it, Theoretically, when it comes off, you'll see what looks like just a strand of hair or a real dark line. You know, these real dark lines, especially the ones with like the little chunks in it, if you can see that. That's probably as good as I'm going to get to show you a burr coming off. I don't think I'm going to be able to show you a perfectly straight hairline burr come off. I'm not quite that great at it. You know, so now the name of the game is essentially honing slash uh, the bur if I'm assuming the burr is now gone on both sides. Uh, so I'm cleaning up the bevel on both sides, making it nice and even graining, you know, gra on the on the V-shape that at the tip, you know, if, if my finger if nails there are, are like the tip of the knife, if you're looking down it. A burr, I should have explained this from the gecko, but a burr is like, uh, uh, okay, so if I'm sharpening the knife, the burr develops on this side, and then I switch sides and I do the same thing, get the burr up on this side. And then I remove the burr, and so I'm trying to, you know, where, where the edges could still be a little bit, eh, I'm trying to kind of like really straighten it out and get it nice and tight. So it's keeping your angle consistent on both ways, as little pressure as you need, and just enough to do it, but uh, just as little as little as you can, but just enough <laughs> to do it. To keep your your knife nice and steady on the stone, it's very possible to totally um, roll your apex over now and have to start basically well not over because it'll be fairly easy at this progress point. But you know what I'm saying? You you can very easily get to a point where and it's okay. You, I I there are times that I've had to go down stones. You know I've gone up and then. 
did something stupid, wasn't paying attention, and had to go back down to a lower grit stone to start and redevelop a burr and, and start again. I should have done a cut test at the beginning to show you how bad it was beforehand. Mm. Oh well. Yep, so if you're looking for, if you, if you haven't sharpened before and you're looking for someone to teach you the, the real quote-unquote proper way to do it, I would check out Jeff Jewell's channel. And, uh, you know, this is more of a, a hybrid way. I, I definitely am doing a lot of what he does. Um, but I think I've kind of developed it into a way that is either... I don't know. It's just this is this is this is the way that works for me. So if you're having any troubles sharpening and haven't tried it this exact way, give it a shot. But just try to remember it's all about keep maintain that angle, lock your wrist, raise your elbow, get your whole body into it if you need to. Don't roll over the apex. Try to stay on the stone. Keep the stone lubricated. And for God's sakes, don't move on to another stone until you've A, developed a burr on both sides. The name of the game is the burr. The burr is the word. Um, because you, if you don't develop a burr, Essentially, you have no idea if you've gotten down to the apex. When I have developed a burr, I know that on, at least on one side, on the side, you know, I, I've gotten all the way down. So since I've done it on both sides, I know that I've gotten the whole bevel down to the apex. On each side. And so now, the areas that I can make a mistake would be... to not hold the angle very well. Doesn't matter so much, especially on an older knife that you don't care about, if you drop the angle, because you're just gonna hit the shoulder of the bevel, but you don't wanna raise it up over and round off the burr. You'll get a, I mean, not the burr, but the uh, the, the apex, the sharp, the, the, the tip, whatever you call it, the, uh, the apex, the cutting edge. That's it. There we go. I'm good with the words. I also have a basket of fruit hanging right over my head and I keep bouncing my head into the thing of bananas. Lighten up, lighten up, lighten up. What am I doing pushing so hard? You also don't need to go fast. There's no super rush. Well, maybe there is for you, but... Until you're until you're comfortable, and confident in yourself, holding holding that edge, holding that angle. There's no you don't want to be going rocket speed like you see people do that have done it for years. Just take your time, find the right angle, the correct angle, not the right angle, uh -huh. and. Um, and just go obviously practice on an older knife before you do it on your expensive ones you know your, your globals and your uh, Zwillings and stuff, those, those are the ones that you want to do after you know how to do it. Start with your boost offs and your uh, 
or actually start with your dollar well see the the problem is when you go to like dollar stores and get knives or get no name knives at all the steel can be so bad sometimes that it actually is harder to sharpen than as if it were a real uh, decent you know at least a decent steel it doesn't need to be a brand name the brand name hardly matters it's just it's the quality of the steel I have no idea what steel this is on this particular knife but the family said they needed sharper kitchen knives that they, they were getting dull Ever since I stopped doing kitchen knives, I've not maintained them very well, so they hate it. But, at the same time, every time I see them use them, they're smashing them into the countertops without cutting boards, so it bugs me. So my punishment to them is that they have to use dull knives. <laughs> Maintain your wetness. Your lubricate lubrication, not your wetness. You know, and if the again if the belly were larger on this, I would just raise my elbow higher. This is almost a straight edge though. The t at the very tip it kinda goes up. Um, a little bit more than it looks like, but this knife has been so, I don't know if it was misused or missharpened over the years, but it's definitely not the shape, it, well, I don't think it was the shape it was in when it was new. And then I try to, for the most part, well, I try, I, I know you're not going to be able to see it with this poor lighting, but... If you see the water on the stone, I use that as kind of a guide to where I am. I want to make sure the edge is right there, and I'm going from edge to edge, or from tip to heel and heel to tip, and that I'm hitting it all the way on that bevel as perfectly as I can, really. And it's just about repetition at this point to get the pattern right. See that? Ooh, that was a good one. That took some of that. I think there was a little bit of a scraggler of that burr on there still. Some steels, you know, some knives rather, and steels, uh, the burrs can go back and forth and back and forth. And that can either be a sign of a cheap steel or a good steel with a good heat treat. So you never really know, but you might sometimes you have to chase the burr back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Okay, so I've got a satisfactory bevel on both sides, and but doesn't quite feel honed enough. What I'm gonna do if I can try not to do it with pressure. One, two, three. One, two. I don't know why I'm doing it like I'm on leather. Three. One, two. And you can do two a couple times. One, two, one, two. Oh, that's getting better. One. 
much pressure, Bob. So easy, easy, easy. Two. Or one. What am I cheesing? It's also a new art to try to record yourself and talk. One. And do this at the same time. One. And yes, I'm counting ones out loud, even though that's kind of may seem stupid, but I'm not a brilliant man. Actually, that's what Nick Shabazz says, isn't it? Not a brilliant man. I'll, I'll change it to I'm not, not a genius. You know, there are, uh, for those of you who are looking into equipment like KME machines and or whatever they're called, tools, uh, Edge Pros and uh, what's it, Viper, I think, I think it's called. There's nothing wrong with them. If that's what you need, that's what you need. Uh, I would start with something cheap like a Lansky, if you know, if you have to, if you find that you have to. But honestly, not so much with kitchen knives. I mean, kitchen knives do do what you got to do. But if you're, you know, this obviously we do more folding knives on this channel, and in the community that's most likely watching this. Uh, so the question of sharpening becomes, you know, can you do it in the field? And while I might not have a Chosera Splash and Go Stone in the field, I could easily use something I find. I could even, I could use a brick to sharpen a stone, I mean, to sharpen a knife if I had to. I mean, at least enough to get by if it was a survival situation or whatever. You know what? And I'm going to actually demonstrate that. Not now, <laughs> but one of my next sharpening videos, I am going to sharpen a knife from dull to at least usable on a rock or a brick, just to show you, but, uh, or even a piece of wood, depending on where, what I can find, you know, if you can get it. another good person to watch if you, if you're for kitchen knives specifically, is uh i'm sure a lot of you might know murray carter carter cutlery he's like the grand master of kitchen cutlery especially japanese and in specific to sharpening you know if you really want to uh get really deep into it he's got he's put his DVD guides out on YouTube. I think they're like two and a half hour long videos where you that you can watch him. He spent like 18 years in Japan becoming a master, literally a ma like a master bladesmith under a Japanese bladesmith. So, anyways, my point is that he he's very not very knowledgeable, and if you're really looking to do a good job or or learn how to do it really the right way to start with, as opposed to doing it this way. Oh yeah, that's nice. This is just the, the, the Bob EDC journey's way, okay? This is not necessarily the exact appropriate way to do everything. But this is what works for me. Maybe this is what will work for you. And if not, maybe you're a professional sharpener who can get a good laugh out of how I do it. And comment below down, tell me exactly how uh, terrible I am at it, but <laughs> it's fine too. I don't mind. I'm just trying to show you that if I can make a knife go from dull to sharp, you can too. It just might take a little time and practice. I used to get so frustrated watching people sharpen knives, you know, in two-second videos where they're going, 
across the stone and all of a sudden they've got a knife that's whittling hairs into 15 pieces and I'm going what the hell I can't even cut a carrot with mine I'm making it worse in fact okay let's find a piece of paper I'll be right back Pretty sharp, guys. Ooh. Okay, so that's how I do it. I hope you could. Did you even see that, or did I do that below the? See with the camera. So this is messed up. I'm doing short, long strokes so that I can see if there's any, I can hear or feel if there's any snags, which I don't feel or hear any. It's sharp. It's really sharp. Whoa! Oh god. Okay, well, now that I've, uh, whatever, that's it. That's my demonstration on a kitchen knife chef knife with almost no belly you know it doesn't take much guys wow that is sharp I'm gonna actually have to warn people because they could cut their fingers off I have it in this little sheath I know this isn't the correct brand for it but what the heck it keeps it safe and protects the edge all right that's it for this video guys hope you enjoyed it hope you maybe learned something or caught a trick from it or got a good laugh Talk to you later. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And then hit that notification bell so that you don't miss anything. Have a great day.